It's not nice to eavesdrop, but it's fun. So let's check in on the comedy of errors at the Baxters. On the little things in life. Brought to you by Ban Rolon, America's leading roll-on antiperspirant. as usual. Well, the reason we're not doing anything is because you never want to do anything. I know. I just meant it'd be nice to be doing something. Well, how can we do something if you don't want to do anything? You turn down all our party invitations. Well, I don't like being out on New Year's Eve with all the drunken drivers. Well, I don't either. Just the same, I think we should be doing something. You know, the last few years it's been the same. You sitting here reading the paper, doing the crossword puzzle, not even talking to me. Okay, okay. I don't have to do the crossword. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I don't have anything to talk about anyhow. What seems to be your problem? I don't know. Wonder how Aunt Maggie's making out in New York. Oh, she'll be having a great time. I hope so. Wasn't it nice of Maynard Blake to think of inviting her down there? Uh-huh. So nice when men think of things to do and then just invite you. What's that mean? Nothing. Oh, no. It meant something. It meant just what I said. It's nice when a man says, how would you like to do such and such and have dinner at such and so a place, and then, you know, you just go. I've got a feeling that I'm being given a message. Well. Okay, come on. Now, what's on your mind? Oh, well, nothing, really. It is. Nothing no, no, not, really means no, no. you do have something no. on your mind. All right, but you never do ask me out anymore. I mean, don't look so surprised you don't. I think that's the trouble with married life. What's the trouble with married well, life? Well, we get in a rut. We do. You and I never have a, you know, like a date anymore. Well, we're married. That's what I mean. What's what you mean? <sighs> oh, never mind. Forget it. No, 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 no. I'm no, just forgetting. No, no. I mean, what are you forget so it. upset about? You're the one who does not want to go out on New Year's Eve, right? Right. So? Well, I mean, you don't even ask me to go out. Honey, you don't want to go out. Well, you don't ask me any other time either. You don't. You never say, oh, to heck with cooking dinner. Why don't we just go out, honey? Oh, yes, I have. And you know what you say? You say, oh, it's so expensive. And so we stay home. Well, it is expensive. On our anniversary, I insisted on taking you out to dinner. I had to browbeat you into it. And you spent the entire evening saying, look, look at this, six fifty or nine ninety five. Five little bitty shrimp and a shrimp cocktail for... Four ninety-five. All right, all right, but that's all you did all during dinner. All you kept saying is that we could have eaten at home for one-tenth of the price. Well, it was true. Honey, if you're going to eat out, you have to pay the price. I guess so. What's the matter? Mm. You bored with me? <laughs> no. Yes, you are. No, I'm married to you. I love you. I'm not bored with you. You're bored with me. Uh, maybe you're bored with me. Maybe we're bored with each other? No. Oh. They say most of the divorces occur in the first year of marriage. And the statistics show that the next period of high divorce rates is with people who've been married from 15 to 22 years. You planning on a divorce? <laughs> no. But you don't seem too interested in me anymore. Oh, honey, what's the matter with you tonight? I love you. The last thing on my mind is divorce. Is, is it on your mind? No, but it's New Year's Eve and we're all alone. Yes, but you're the one who never wants to go anywhere on New Year's Eve. We turn down all invitations and we sit here. I know. Maybe we should have asked some people in. Well, it's too late now. Yeah. Did you want to go somewhere? Well, <laughs> you know me. I like parties. I know. Well, in any case, it's too late to go anywhere now. Where could we go? Well, Evie and Fred are having a party. We could go over there. They'll all be drunk by this time. That's pretty tiresome. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's mm. all right. I'm sleepy, too. Ah. I think next year we'd better plan something different for New Year's Eve. Mm. Have a party here. Oh, then they wouldn't go home until all hours. I know, but sitting here by ourselves isn't so great either. Do you know it's way past our usual bedtime? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Why? Why are we sitting up? I guess to see the big celebration at Times Square on television. So what? <laughs> Why do we knock ourselves out to see that? I don't know. Goodness knows we've seen it often enough. Okay. Yeah. Then why do we keep thinking we've got to stay up to see the new year coming? I don't know, dear, but we always do. Aren't you sleepy? Oh, yes. I'm just dead tired after all the Christmas <sighs> festivities please, and shopping. Then why and all don't that? we, please, why don't we, just once... Say to heck with sitting up, half asleep, to see the crowds yelling in Times Square. <laughs> and why don't we, just once, 
go to bed and get some sleep. <laughs> somebody will phone us, you know that. Oh, yeah. We'll no sooner get to bed than somebody will call us and wake us up to say Happy New Year. Well, we'll just pull out the cord to our bedroom extension. Oh, no, no, dear. Aunt Maggie might call or Debbie or even Tom. Oh, I don't like to disconnect the phone. All right, honey, but why don't we just start the new year by being sensible? Well... Now, look, we're both sleepy, right? I know I am. Oh, I guess I am, too. Okay. Then let's go to bed. Get some sleep. I never have understood why it's all so f- all fired important to stay up to see the new year in. <laughs> I know. Me neither. Okay. I'll lock the doors and let's go upstairs. I hope Debbie took her key. She always forgets it when she stays out late. You want me to leave the front door unlocked? No, no, no. I won't sleep anyhow until she gets in. <laughs> Typical mother. I guess so. Come on. Let's start the new year right by getting a good night's sleep. Famous last words. I know. I just know that somebody will call us to wish us a happy new year. Who do you think it's going to be? Oh, I don't know. I don't even want to guess. Let's be surprised. In the meantime, let's get some sleep. Huh? Yeah. I said somebody would wake us up to say Happy New Year. Get the phone, dear. It's on your side. Bob, dear, wake up. It's nearly four in the morning. Honey, get it, dear. I, 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 I can't find it. Oh, the phone's uh, on my side. I'm sorry. You see? <laughs> yeah, hello? Four in the morning? Who could call us at this hour? Just a moment. Uh, it's for you, dear. Long, long distance, Mr. Robert Baxter. Here. All right. Uh, turn on the light. Uh, okay, yeah, I got it. Okay. Hello? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Can't be Aunt Maggie. She wouldn't call it this hour. Yes, yeah, w- w- uh, who? Who is it? Oh, Jeanette. Jeanette. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake. Jeanette. Well, how are you? Oh, where are you? Yeah. Oh, well, yes, yes, you did wake me. I mean, after all, there's a time difference, but that's okay. Uh, well, Jeanette. sure, I'm fine. Jeanette who? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm married. Uh huh. Peg. Uh, yeah, well, it's the same one, the same Peg, yes. Oh, that, Jeanette. Uh, look, Jeanette, uh, uh, how, how did you know where to call me? Uh, oh, my sister, sure, sure. What does she want? Yeah, well, look, Jeanette. Jeanette. No, 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 I don't mind your calling. No, what? No, no, my wife doesn't mind either. What do you mean I don't? Now, please, Jeanette, don't cry. Yeah, yes, of course we had a good friendship, but you, Jeanette, Jeanette, She's at a party, huh? Listen, She's at a party, Jeanette. Listen, uh, Jeanette, dear. Um, Would you like me to get out of bed uh, and leave the room? Y- so y- you your what? Be... Oh well, sure, sure, of course. I'd love to see you again, but uh, yeah, I mean, let us know when you, what you know, when you're arriving. Mm. Oh, please, what is Jeanette, going don't on? cry. What's going on? Fine, fine. You do that, and I'd love to see you, and a happy new year to you, Jeanette. <laughs> All right, fine. Bye bye. That was Jeanette. Oh. Well, what I didn't get is what she wanted. Nothing, just to say happy new year. After 20 years? She was at a party, and somebody mentioned my name, and she said, let's call him. So she called my sister. Jeanette was always friends with Dorothy, and Dorothy gave her my number. And so Dorothy was never really liked me, but like Jeanette is trying to start something? Oh, no, she is What was that about? Let us know when you're arriving. Well, Jeanette is coming east. She's in California, and she's coming east, and she thought she'd stop and see us. She's coming east. Now, you said that three times. When is she coming? I don't know. Soon. January, she said. Hmm. Yeah. I'm back. They're not going to worry about it. You can worry about it. Well, why should I worry about it? <laughs> Seeing an old girlfriend? One who's still crazy about you? One you were engaged to and threw her over for me? And she's coming here? And she's not married? And she still adores you and she hates me? <laughs> oh, honey, that's what's known in a... Stories is a situation. Yeah, I know. And I don't like it. I know. Men never do, and women just love it. You know, the nerve of her calling you after 20 years. Uh-oh. Ah, well. I go back to sleep. Back to sleep? How can I sleep after this? Well, you better try. 
You're going to need your strength in January when Jeanette arrives. Happy New Year, dear. Oh, boy. I hope so. I sure hope so. Do you think all antiperspirants are basically the same? Well, ban roll-on antiperspirant may just change your mind. Take effectiveness, for instance. Tests have shown that ban roll-on antiperspirant will actually help stop wetness better than most leading sprays. Make your own test soon. Pick up a bottle of ban roll-on, and you may discover what we've shown in tests. Ban roll-on antiperspirant, proof that not all antiperspirants are created equal. If I had a nickel for every minute I've spent in a dirty oven, scraping and scrubbing, oh, I'd be living in Fort Knox. Well, there's a different way to clean your oven that's less work. The overnight way, with Mr. Muscle. Oh, come on. It's true. With Mr. Muscle, you just spray it on at night. And while you sleep, its self-scouring foam lifts up the grease and grime. Really? So next morning, you just wipe clean. Well, Mr. Muscle really sounds like a good man to wake up to. The Little Things in Life, created by Peg Lynch, has been brought to you by Mr. Muscle, the oven cleaner that works the easy overnight way. This program comes to you from the Radio Playhouse.